All right, welcome back, everybody. We're just continuing working on our Bullet Hell game. And we right now have a spaceship that shoots bullets. But that doesn't really make a Bullet Hell game. What makes a Bullet Hell game is the waves of enemies that are coming after you. So we're going to make an enemy class today. And we're also going to make a launcher that will produce waves of enemies. Uh, we're not going to finalize this today. We're just going to get it working and build the ground uh, level of it. And then later on, we'll come back to make it really shine. But we'll start off by making a new tab and make the enemy class. So if you've been following along, you know that uh, our class enemy is going to extend a game object. And of course, game object is something we built in the first video of this series. Uh, and you know, we have a whole mechanisms to, to make all this work. So go back and watch the earlier videos if you don't know what's going on with game object. So enemies, we'll have a constructor. And again, a constructor is just going to define how an uh, enemy begins its life when you create a new enemy. And it's going to be pretty useful if we can tell the enemy where to go. It'd be nice if we could say, hey, enemy start at the top of the screen or start at the bottom of the screen or start wherever you want. So instead of, you know, sending X to some, you know, generic number or something and all the enemies start at the same place, we're going to set them to some parameter that we're going to send the constructor when we actually build the enemies. So we'll make a float incoming X parameter and float incoming Y parameter. What the heck are these parameters? Well, these are uh, information that we're going to send the constructor when we actually go to build an enemy. Uh, so the constructor doesn't actually know where it's going to make these enemies at the beginning. But that's okay, because it knows to wait for instructions and wait to get that information before it goes any further. We can make a few other, uh, I guess, um, you make a few other assumptions for now, and later on we'll, we'll probably expand this, but for now we'll just make you know, dx0 and dy uh, like 3 or something, just to make it so that they move down the screen. That'll be good enough for now. Uh, anything else we have to take into account? Oh, no, not really. I think that's going to be good for now. So, we're going to make our uh, usual functions. To make this work, we're going to avoid show. We're going to have a void uh, act. And we're going to have a Boolean. And uh, forgetting what we're calling it in uh, this series, what do we call it? Has died. Boolean has died. Uh, my two classes, unfortunately, I chose different names for <laughs> these things. So some people are using has died, and some people are using is dead. So has died is apparently the function that we're using here. Uh, and of course, we're going to have to return something. But we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. So I don't know. Uh, if you're having problems at your computer, you're like, has died. It's not working. Uh, it's probably you just have to double check what you named it in, um, in game object and use the same name that you're using there. So anyways, enemies will show. We'll just make them a simple rectangle for now. Uh, I'm going to fill with, I think I have an orange color or something I'm using. Yeah, orange. Just to make it obvious that, you know, they're not stars. Uh, we'll fill it with orange, and we'll make a rectangle at X and Y, and we'll make them, you know, 50 by 50. Doesn't really matter what their size is right now. Well, we can sort out those details later. To be honest, this class, you know, is going to not be replaced, but built upon. Because later on, we're going to have enemies that are somewhere small, and some are big, and some are fast, and some are slow. So... This is all going to change in the future. Uh, not change, sorry. It's going to be built upon. All right, so the act function, you know, what does an enemy do? Right now, it's just going to move. So we're just going to put our moving code. X equals X plus DX. Y equals Y plus DY. You know, that's pretty much all we have to do. Later on, we're going to build in some ability for the enemy to see if it's been shot, as well as to produce bullets. But that's not going to be today. Uh, has died. Well, you know what? If it goes off the screen, I think that's a pretty good indication that the, the uh, enemy has died. And, and what screen edges go off? Well, since they're going down only, 
I guess we'll just make them go off the screen, so uh, at the bottom of the screen. So we'll return uh, if dy is greater than height, not dy, sorry, if y is greater than height. So if we're uh, beyond the bottom of the screen, then it's true that we have died. So that's what we're doing there. So that's a good start. And just to test to make sure this is working, let's go and just make a whole bunch of enemies just in the draw function. Just like we make stars, let's, uh, let's make some enemies. Oh, I have some leftover code here from a demo I did in class. So yeah, let's make some enemies. We'll just make a whole bunch of enemies. We'll send them to the center of the screen. Height divided by two, sure. We'll just watch the enemies come out. Well, this would be this orange bar, pretty much, I, I expect it to look like. So we'll run that. And, oh my, uh, it's coming right on the center of the screen. We're getting tons of enemies. That's that's a good start. <laughs> we, we can't shoot them yet or anything, but, you know, they're, they're there. They're working. So let's go back, and now we're going to consider how we can thoughtfully add enemies just you know, spewing out enemies as, as fast as our frame rate. Um, you know, I'm sure there are levels of bullet hell games that are that challenging, but I don't think we're going to go there. So what we'll do is get rid of that, and we'll instead of just having enemies come out, we're going to make a launcher object. It's going to be extending game object as well, uh, and it's going to be responsible for producing the enemies. And what we can do is move it around to create patterns of enemies, waves of enemies, your classic kind of zigzag patterns or straight lines or whatever it is that you want to do. So we'll make a launcher object next. So here comes a launcher class. So class launcher Ooh. extends game object. Uh, and it's not going to be super different. Uh, in terms of, you know, it's not going to have any new variables or anything compared to a game object. Uh, I'm going to set its width, uh, sorry, its x at width divided by 2, so at the center of the screen. And I'm going to set y at 100. We're going to make the launcher on screen right now, but just for testing. Later on, we'll hide the launcher off screen, so we'll never actually see the launcher. It'll just produce the enemies. Um, you know, DX doesn't matter really at the moment. We'll, we'll sort of set those things if we need them. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a void show. This is really just for testing. We don't need to see the launcher, as I said. So we'll make a, I don't know, gray ellipse. I'll make it nice and big just so we can make sure that we see it and see what's going on. And oops, we will also do an act function. And the act function is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, it's going to just be a list of the kinds of waves that we do. And it will also be a way of timing when those waves come out. So this will be a bunch of if statements asking, you know, what time is it? If it's this time, you know, do these types of things. If it's another time, do a different type of thing. So that's how act is going to work. Uh, and we're going to have a boolean has died function. Of course, we'll return false because you know this isn't something we can shoot or whatever. I mean, there might be there might be a condition in which we'll have our launchers die, but for now, I think it'll be fine just to go this way. So. Uh, let's see, the x function. So what we're going to do is we're going to base this on a variable called frame count. It's a pink variable, so you know that it's a built-in variable that processing manages uh, without us having to do anything. And frame count, the idea behind it is it just you know counts uh, how many frames have been going since the beginning of the game. And later on, we're actually going to change this because, you know, if you want to pause the game, if you want to have an intro screen, frame count still continues to count. So that means it's not going to be a reliable thing. We can't pause frame count. But right now, frame count is a good standby for us to use. So frame count. How are we going to use frame count? 
So basically, we can ask questions like, hey, if frame count is, say, less than 100, then we can do nothing. Maybe the enemies will be paused until you know, that uh, frame count catches up to 100. So for the first 100 frames, we do nothing. And then we can do an else if. So what we can say is, well, you know, if it failed this check, if frame count wasn't less than 100, then we can assume that it must be at least 100. So, you know, else if, you know, we don't have to say if at least 100, we could just assume that's true and say if frame count is less than 1,000. So this means between 100 and 1,000 will put out some wave of enemies. So maybe I'll call this a uh, straight line wave of enemies, and then else if frame count is less than uh, 1500, we'll make a double line of enemy enemies. Double line, and we can make all sorts of different things, uh, all sorts of different patterns. <coughs> Excuse me. So you'll notice that straight line and double line are not something that comes with processing. These are functions we will write. So this is the first class that will have different functions that are usual on this one. Pardon me. All right. So what are these straight line and double line functions? Well, they're just responsible for moving the launcher to the right place and then having them uh, produce enemies, actually make the enemies. So we'll do that. Uh, so we'll have a function called straight line. Uh, it would be nice to actually tell the straight line where to be, but we'll just start with, um, you know, we'll just say x to width divided by 2. And what we'll do is we'll produce an enemy every so often. So what kind of rate of enemy production do we want? Well, let's say we would like to make an enemy every tenth frame. So on frame 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on, we want to produce enemies when we get to a multiple 10 in the frame count. There's a way to do that in processing. What you can do is do frame count, and then it's the percent sign, but it's pronounced modulus, or mod, 10 equals zero. <coughs> so you might be wondering what the heck is this stuff. Uh, the story is, when you use the modulus operator, the percent sign here, what it does is it takes frame count and divides it by 10. And instead of returning the quotient, it returns the remainder. So if your remainder equals zero, that means frame count must be a multiple of that number. So that's called modulus. That's the modulus operator. Gosh, it is so useful. You will use modulus in ways you cannot even imagine right now. <laughs> it will be very helpful in future uh, game programming and programming in general. So that's how we can tell for on the tenth frame. So what we'll do is we'll make a new enemy. So we'll say engine.add new enemy, and we'll send it to the x and y of the launcher. So that's what straight line does. And you know it might be nice to be able to say, hey, let's make a straight line at this place and that place. Instead of writing like fifteen different straight line functions, what we'd like what we'd like to do is be able to just tell the straight line where to go. So maybe we could send that information. Like maybe we could say straight line at uh, 100. And then later on, maybe we could subdivide this a little bit more. We could say else if frame count is less than, let's make this uh, less than, I don't know, 600. Make this one less than uh, 1100. Doesn't really matter. These numbers are kind of irrelevant. We could say straight line. Uh, maybe like 600 or something. I guess that's a little off our screen, maybe 400. So now we can say, hey, go to this place and make a line. Uh, go to that place. What are these places? Well, these would be the x coordinates of where we'd like our straight line to be. So instead of just setting it to width divided by 2, we can make a parameter here. We could call it, um, I don't know, quote, uh, incoming x, I guess, is, is the, what we've been using. And we'll just set x to incoming x. And that way we can use straight line as a multi-purpose function of producing waves of straight lines of enemies. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, double line, we'll, we'll talk about later. We'll just get this running and see if this works. Uh, oh, actually, it won't work. 
and you'll see that there's no launcher, no enemies or anything going on. The reason is because, well, we haven't added the launcher to our project yet. So we'll have to add a launcher. There it is right there. Engine.add new launcher. I just do that in the setup, void setup in the main tab, and then we'll have one launcher ready to go. So we'll run this now. There's our launcher, and we can see it producing, wow, a lot of enemies. And that's at x equals 100. And eventually it'll switch over to producing enemies at x equals 400. So those are still stacked together very heavily. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so let's go back and maybe adjust some of those numbers. Launcher could be you know, every 10th frame, maybe every 100th frame. So on frames 100, 200, 300, and so on. Let's see what that looks like. Stop that and run it. All right, so now it produces an enemy one at a time. And I'll do that until whatever frame count we programmed that for. And now it switches over here, producing our enemies on that side. All sorts of fun stuff. And then it ends. And how come it ends? Well, we didn't program it to do anything after that. That was frame count 1500, is I guess how far I got. And now it does nothing after that. So, uh, you know, we're not going to get too much into it. You guys can design your own cool uh, patterns. Maybe I'll do a random, random wave, we'll call it. That'll be another one we could do. Just to demonstrate how, again, to make one of these wave functions. Here's, a, here's an idea. We can make these waves sort of just, you know, make random enemies appear. Uh, you know, enemies that are at random positions on the screen. So we'll do void random wave. And we don't need to send in any parameters because it's going to decide. We'll just set x to a random number. We'll say between 50 and uh, whatever our width is, minus 50. And then you know, we'll basically do the exact same thing as our previous wave. Oh, I apparently have lost the ability to cut and paste. Ah, <laughs> I played around with some settings uh, earlier uh, on my keyboard. So now I've, I've had caused problems. Let's just put it back in there. Uh, so this is uh, if frame count <laughs> mod 100 equals 0. Then we'll make a new enemy and add it to the engine. Enemy xy basically is going to be the same story for our random uh, wave. But what will make the random wave interesting is the fact that, I mean, I'll make it a little bit faster every 50th frame. Uh, you know, the x is going to be changing itself. Engine.add new enemy xy. So we'll run that and we'll see. I guess a little bit different. We'll see the straight line at 100. We'll see the straight line at 400. And then we'll see the launcher just going all over the place, back and forth, going crazy, and producing an enemy every once in a while, every 50th frame. See, there it goes. It's going crazy. And on the 50th frame, wherever it ended up, it produces an enemy. So we have sort of a random assortment of enemies. And we can keep on designing more and more. Uh, we'll come back to that in a later video, though. So that's good for launchers. Just to let you know, the launcher, you know what? We said it's not going to be on screen. That's true. It's set its y coordinate to minus 100. And when we run this, now it just looks like enemies are coming off the top of the screen. Which is, you know, how it works usually in a bullet hell game. There's all sorts of possibilities of enemies coming on the side of the screen from the bottom of the screen you know those would all be good ideas and you know we'll see how we can make launchers in the future that will accomplish those goals uh, well i'm not sure if we'll do a separate class or not or what we'll do but you know now that we have enemies it would be really cool if we could shoot them and blow them up so that's what we're going to do in our next video so we'll see you guys in a little while bye